Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen where we're making pigeon tofu. Or trying to. Why? Because inflation is just where it's at right now. Or because we're at the pigeon protein part of this recession. Or just because you requested it. Y'all know I love to do what you want, as long as I want to do it too. So to start, we're gonna need some pigeon peas, aka tordal. I actually couldn't find it at nearby grocery stores, so I ended up buying it on Amazon, so I'll leave the link if you need it. These are split pigeon peas. To be more specific, they look similar to common yellow peas. They are smaller. So much smaller that I don't think we're gonna need as long to soak them to fully rehydrate, compared to the usual. But as usual for this series, where we take non-soy ingredients and apply the traditional soy tofu making method to them, I'll measure out one pound or 454 grams of dried ingredient. Later, I'll get into the total cost, how it compares to traditional tofu in value, but for now, we must rehydrate these peas with a hot soak with just boiled water. It's super hot, so be careful at home and use your common sense if you're following along with your own version of this experiment. Then we can just let this sit on the table for... Oh, since these split peas are so tiny, I'm gonna guess one hour before they fully plump up. Maybe even less. An hour later, the peas have expanded, soaking up water and taking up more room in this jar. So, let's get them drained. And measured. The peas now weigh 857 grams. Remember, dried, they were 454 grams, meaning they soaked up 403 grams of water. Next, we'll get our pigeon peas blended. As per usual, we're using double the amount of water, blending for 30 seconds on high speed. Long enough, but not too long, to break the peas down finely, but not so fine that they become a pain to squeeze through this milk bag. Now we have a bunch of pulp. I'll rinse out the bag first and then we're gonna repeat the process with the rest of these peas. And then we're just gonna let this sit and see that starch layer at the bottom? We're gonna let that sit and settle and probably get deeper. It's actually been an hour and a half. I just wanted to give it a little extra time and you can see the amount of starch has increased it looks like, well, depth-wise, it looks like about double, but because of the shape of the bowl, you can tell that it is more than double. All right, so we're gonna skim off the top and get cooking. I think we did a pretty good job there. And there we have our starch. You know, the other day I was thinking about um, starch noodles. And I wonder if any of these can make starch noodles. I know mung bean starch can make noodles, but can pigeon pea starch make noodles? Hmm. Let me know if you want us to find out. We have our lovely pot of milk, pigeon pea milk. And I'm gonna get that started on high heat. And I have my trusty flat-sided spatula and my thermometer to see uh, how things are doing. Right now we're at 27 degrees Celsius. That's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And I will take this to a simmer. Simmer it for 10 minutes to cook the pea milk through before we add a coagulant and see if it will really tofu. As always, I'm scraping along the bottom to make sure nothing gets stuck there and burnt. One thing I really like about this induction stovetop is it heats up fast. We're at 127 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 53 degrees Celsius. I'm feeling a little bit of a film forming at the bottom. So I need to be a little more aggressive with the scraping. Oh, here we go. There's that simmer. I'm not really getting an accurate read on the temperature because the foam is in the way, but we're basically at 190 degrees. 
There we go, we're at a rolling boil. I'm about to drop the temperature. I wanna control the heat to get steady, low simmer. Making tofu is a peaceful endeavor. I do not need a violent rolling boil. While that's simmering, I'm going to get my kawaii lunch ready. This time, I'm pretty confident that the regular amount of coagulant is going to do it. So I have half a cup of room temperature water. I'm going to add one teaspoon and a half of my food grade gypsum, AKA calcium sulfate. And just leave the spoon in there because we're going to have to stir it up later. Meanwhile, my milk is going crazy. So drop the temperature again. Give it the occasional stir. I don't think you have to be constantly stirring like we were earlier, but it's still building up on the sides, which I think is a good sign. And there is a little buildup at the bottom, so I'm scraping it down. Oakley Doakley, it's been about 10 minutes and this pea milk smells well cooked. Well, I guess it's time for a taste test. Not gonna lie, it's a little weird. It doesn't taste like the yellow or green pea milks. Instead, it's a bit floral, mild with a light savoriness and a slightly worrying touch of a flaxy mouthfeel, if you know what I mean. But let's keep going. All right, we're at 185 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the perfect time to start putting in my coagulant. So I'm gonna stir it up real quick and stir that in so that the coagulant gets distributed in the milk as evenly as I can get it. Stir, 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 and then stop the motion. You can already see the little bitsies of curd forming. Can you see that? Here's our close up. Do you see the, um, you can already, you can feel it under that spatula, it's thick. All right, so I'm going to cover this, leave it on the warm stove top. Cover it for 15 minutes. Let that fully coagulate, hopefully. Hopefully it fully coagulates. And then we'll get back to it. 15 minutes and it is the moment of truth. Look at that, ooh. <laughs> All right, let's go in. Looking for a clear way. Yep, looks clear in the middle. It looks clear on the side. This is, <laughs> I'm impressed. This is actually looking really good. <gasps> Those curds, they're nice and they're much more solid than um, our previous two. It's more, more solid than the green pifu, yellow pifu, and the chick pifu, if I recall correctly. All right, so I'm gonna transfer it to my tofu press, my very favorite tofu press. As always, the link is in the description because I think you should all get one. <laughs> Not only is it good for making tofu, it's also good for just pressing your store-bought tofu. Like I always press my tofu when I'm making certain things like my black pepper tofu. That recipe is an older one, an oldie but a goodie. Maybe this way. Yeah, that's better. All right, this looks like a lot of tofu. Look, look at that. Look at that glorious jiggle. Okay. All I have left over is some fine curds. And I'm not really gonna bother because I'm kind of in a hurry. I have things to do today. I'm gonna do a whey taste test with some curds in there. Hmm, I'm getting more of that floralness. That's interesting. This is the first way that I wouldn't use as vegetable broth. I mean, maybe I would, <laughs> but it doesn't remind me of your tip. You know what I would use it in? It's curry. I would use it as the base of a curry because I just feel like this, this flavor matches. Yeah, it's interesting. It's not bad. It's not my favorite way though. And that said, we've had some pretty darn good whey. Chickpea whey was really good. Green pea food whey was excellent. There's been quite a few really good ways. So this is the first one that I don't really love that much. Time to fold up the cloth. There is a lot of whey in here. Pop that lid on, the pressing top, and pour out the whey. Oh, it's kind of gross, but let me get some midstream. 
without the curds. Yeah, my assessment remains the same. So I am going to twist the top on this and that increases the pressure. And then this will go into the fridge. It's right now at four centimeters, looks like. We'll see how much it presses. And tomorrow morning, we shall see what this turns into. Well, friends, it's the next day and I cannot wait to find out. Well, I can wait because we are gonna wait. First, oops, I really thought this would be big enough. It's not. And just out of curiosity, that's interesting. It's different from before. It's lost that floral, slightly bitter taste. Well, let's get on with our tofu. It seems very springy. a pretty good bouncy texture. All right, taste test time. It's softer than I expected and it really, well, it tastes like lentils. I guess it tastes like pigeon peas, although I don't think I've ever had a pigeon pea by itself. It has a slightly bitter finish to it. It's not my favorite, but it has a pretty good texture. I think this would be Amazing in something saucy, something braised, maybe a curry. Let's see how much tofu we actually have here. That's 310, 311 grams here. I'm gonna round it up to 315 to account for the bite I just had. And I think this is pretty comparable to extra firm tofu. So let's compare the price. Let us do our usual air fry test. I'm actually using the same seasoning that we used for the last time we air fried. Pop these in the air fryer. Now, a few of you have asked me which air, what air fryer we have here, and I will link in the description with the caveat that it's not an endorsement. I'm not recommending you to buy this. I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm just saying the other products I have linked down there, they are my tried and true products, and I highly recommend them because I've had great experience over years. But this one, I'm not ready to say that I recommend it. But just know, the link is in the description, so you can go check it out yourself, read the reviews yourself, then make your own decision. For now, I will reserve judgment. I'm gonna put this on for 400 degrees and 10 minutes. Oftentimes I do eight minutes, but I think 10 minutes this time. These cubes are slightly bigger than normal. So take it away, air fryer. Let's start here with a big piece. It's got that springy texture that we love. The outside, although looks like it might be crispy, sounds like it might be crispy. As we all know, it's never crispy, okay? It's chewy. Mmm. I mean, it really tastes like lentils. I mean, if, if you're not familiar with pigeon peas, but you wanna know what this tastes like, it basically tastes like your regular yellow lentil. Anyways, let's move on to our air fried with oil. So I'm gonna try it plain first. Look at that texture. It's nice. And let's go in for our seasoned versions. I'll cut these both at once. For my oil-free friends, this is the way to go. Such a simple seasoning, but so good. And then our seasoned, but with oil on the outside. It improves the browning so much. Here's the difference. Just looks so much nicer. 
and it really does add something. In conclusion, pigeon peas are not my favorite tasting pea. However, it is pretty good, and especially when you add some seasoning, you're not gonna taste those um, musky, slightly bitter undertones that are present in pigeon peas. And it still, it makes a wonderful texture tofu. So if that's all you have on hand, well, don't be sad because it makes an excellent tofu. It really does. Highly recommend. Now what do we do with all the rest of the tofu that we have? For our next test, the boil test. All right, it's been two minutes. Turn off the heat. Ooh, that's good. There's only a, a couple little bitsies of curds that have come off the edges. What I'm feeling in there, ooh, that feels bouncy and nice. Do you see that? It's like, it has a very nice silky finish, but it has this wonderful bouncy texture, bouncy quality. So let these cool before I do a taste test. Oh yeah, that is a good spring back. It's like a bouncy ball. Oh shoot. I take back anything negative I've said about pigeon pea tofu. Yep, it tastes like tofu, guys. <laughs> a wonderful, a wonderful option for soy-free tofu. If you have pigeon peas, give it a go. Highly recommend. And for my next trick, I will turn this into the most delicious curry alongside some chewy and wonderful naan. So just click on through to watch it. Thank you so much for watching here, my friends. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. Go ahead and turn on notifications if you don't wanna miss a thing. And let me know down in the comments what else you think I should tofuify because well, guys, I'm all out of peas. Bye for now.